The ability of HIV-1 to develop drug-resistant mutants is due to two factors. The virus's rapid replication of up to 10 billion particles per day and the high error rate of reverse transcriptase when copying the viral genetic code. Up to five wrong nucleotides may be integrated per genome copied. Reverse transcriptase has no proofreading activity, a mechanism by which mispaired or inappropriately incorporated nucleotides can be exchanged. These errors therefore lead to a change in the viral genotype. Statistically, every possible single mutation in the HIV genome occurs many times per day. Mutations in the sequence that codes for the viral enzymes result in the production of enzymes that are subtly different from their wild-type counterparts. The activities of the wild-type enzymes are normally blocked by antiretroviral drugs. However, some mutations, called primary mutations, induce changes in the amino acid sequence, which lead to drug resistance. The location and the pattern of the mutations determine the grade of the arising resistance. For example, the mutation D30N in protease may cause resistance to only one specific protease inhibitor whereas mutation I54V may cause resistance to several substances in the protease inhibitor class. This is called cross-resistance. With second-generation antiretrovirals, resistance is less likely to develop. They require the accumulation of several specific mutations to become inefficient. As a consequence of resistance, the IC50, the concentration of a drug necessary to reduce the replication by 50%, is higher in the mutant virus compared to wild type. The difference in replication between wild type and mutant virus is called change in IC50. Because primary mutations decrease the fitness of the mutant virus, in the absence of drug therapy, the wild type, unmutated virus dominates the population. Mutants still emerge, but mutated viruses are less fit and persist only at low levels. The initiation of drug therapy exerts a selective pressure on the virus population. Wild-type virus is prevented from replicating. The viral load decreases. If a drug was given alone, mutants would emerge within a short period of time. Because they are not susceptible to the drug therapy, they would come to dominate the viral population, leading to treatment failure. Standard antiretroviral therapy therefore combines at least three drugs to target HIV simultaneously. Multiple mutations in different enzymes would be required for resistance to all drugs in the regimen. Once the viral replication is driven down to undetectable levels, the likelihood of such a mutant emerging is reduced dramatically. High levels of adherence are required for successful antiretroviral therapy. Subtherapeutic drug concentration due to poor adherence leads to an elevated replication rate. This increases the probability of resistance arising and a failure of the actual antiretroviral therapy. Improved drugs combine ease of administration and high potency against mutant viruses to help patients control the HIV infection.